Aldous is brought to you with the kind compliments of Rituals Coffee House. Good evening and welcome to Altos, a weekly news and current affairs program produced by the Catholic News and broadcast here on Trinity TV and on TTT. I'm Neil Parsonlal. Here's a look at this week's top stories. Four get awards from the International Women's Forum. They are praised for their courage, passion and dedication. Struggle, service and sacrifice identified as the hallmarks of a saxophonist Dr. Roy Cape as he is laid to rest. The Trinidad and Tobago community in Miami celebrate Independence and Republic Days with Holy Mass. Father Godfrey Stout calls for an end to double standards. The Vatican gives a green light for devotion at Medjugorje. And later we speak with Rhonda Mengo, co-founder of the Living Water Community and a recent award recipient. And here's a look at this week's top story. Two Roman Catholics who have devoted their life to serving others are among four women to have received awards from the International Women's Forum of Trinidad and Tobago at its annual Women Awards Gala. Vice President of the IWFTT, Anna Maria Garcia Brooks, spoke of the courage, passion, dedication, and the special calling of the four extraordinary women whom she said have inspired others by their impact and influence. Laura Pickford Gordon has more in this report. Referring to the honorees, Rhonda Mango, Deborah De Rosia, Dr. Judah Gobin, and Akusa Dadein Edwards, Anna Maria Garcia Brooks emphasized their profound impact, noting that they have dedicated themselves entirely to their work for the benefit of thousands. Each of the women we honor tonight, and all those who were nominated, represent unique stories of courage, passion, dedication, and a special calling that we sometimes call vision. Garcia Brooks noted that this event stands as a testament to the progress made in women's rights while also reminding of the challenges that lie ahead. And we must continue to dismantle systemic barriers that hinder the advancement of women and people everywhere. Let us remember that when we advocate for women, we advocate for families, and it is families, whatever their composition, that builds communities and build nations. A new accolade, the Inspirational Legacy Award, was awarded to Rhonda Mingo, co-founder of the Living Water Community, for her nearly five decades of serving the needy across Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. This God who had captured me, I knew that I would spend the rest of my life trying to capture him. It's been a long time, and I still haven't captured him. <laughs> the Inspirational Champion of Women Award went to Deborah DeRosia, director of four nonprofits focused on education and vocational training. For my parents, grandparents, aunts, for as long as I know it, we have washed clothes for the poor, creamed the butter and sugar to make cake so that those without can have something. Professor Judith Gobin, the first female professor of life sciences at the University of the West Indies, received the Inspirational Advocate Award. The Inspirational Emerging Leader Award went to Akusa Dardane Edwards, founder of the Nina Foundation, which supports girls and young women transitioning from the St. Jude School. I am Lara Victor Gordon, a Catholic this News Altos. Beautiful this Congratulations to them all. Roman Catholic priest and vicar for communications, Father Robert Christo, wants parents to teach their children the pillars of struggle, service, and sacrifice, which he said marked the life of musician Roy Cape, who rose to stardom despite his humble beginnings. Delivering the homily at Cape's funeral service at Napa last Monday, Father Christo also had a message about crime. Roger Santos more in this report. It was a musical send-off for one of the country's musical giants, Roy Cape, a man who became a household name as one of this country's greatest saxophonists.
Many of Cape's peers, his daughter Joanne Cape Julian and acting Prime Minister Stuart Young pay tribute to him. The congregation at Napa heard that Cape lost his mother when he was young and never knew his father. He and his brother lived on the streets for a while until the authorities put him in the St. Dominic's Children's Home where he lived from 1953 to 1958. It was while there that Cape discovered his passion for music. The St. Dominic's Children's Home formed him. And you never forget where you come from. We forget where we, we celebrate you and all them young children there when may not have known him, but they can make a difference and form a new Royal Cape Foundation, Sharon. There is hope. Delivering the homily at Cape's funeral, Father Robert Christo described the Cape as a humble man who came from humble beginnings and who rose to the top of his game. Today, he said parents are giving their children everything except God. That's where you come from. Gets your character. And maybe that's what you're not telling our children. You're not teaching our children through their sins. It's struggle, service, and sacrifice. Struggle, service, and sacrifice bring salvation. Father Christos spoke to the state of crime in the country, saying everyone must look at themselves. You want to know what happened to the youths? Hello? The middle letter of crime is I. Look in the mirror. When you don't go to work, when you run bull and you have, a, and you have work to do, that's the bandit. But he said God had the power to change things as he urged those in authority to use the Panyard model to help bring about change. It will change. Trust me, when you go through dark moments, don't lose focus, change. Continue to use the Panyard model right, as a powerful social tool to change lives. And... I am Roger Sand reporting for Catholic News Out. Father Godfrey Stout says while Trinidad and Tobago may be experiencing crime, criminality and other problems, all is not lost. And he's appealing to Roman Catholics to lead by example and not live lives of double standards. Father Stout was the chief celebrant at the Christ the King Roman Catholic Church in Miami, Florida, as the Trinidad and Tobago community there celebrated this country's 62nd anniversary of independence and 48th anniversary as a republic nation. Roger Sand brings us more. The choir, led by Marcelin Peters of the Point Fortin Music Ministry, decked out in the national colors of TNT, performed a powerful renditions of faith that had the congregation singing, clapping, and participating. Chief celebrant Father Godfrey Stout used the day's gospel reading from Mark, in which Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? to base his homily. Father Stout reminded the faithful that the question is one for all of us. Who is Jesus to you? He said if Jesus is important, then our lives must bear testimony to that. But he lamented that too many go to church to warm the pews. And that, my dear friends, is evident in the way we conduct ourselves. First of all, we criticize everybody. It's easy for you to criticize other people when you fail to look at yourself. Look at the man in the mirror. Many, many years ago, remember Michael Jackson says, you must start with the man in the mirror? Start with the man, the person in the, in the mirror, the person looking back at you. First start there, and then, of course, you can project that outside. 62 years ago, when this country became independent, Father Stout said then Archbishop Count Finbar Ryan prayed that TNT will be a people of God. For the most part, we have been on that path, but then, by the, somewhere along the line, we started to lose it. Mm? And like every other country, every other nation, by the friends, we have our problems. Yes. We have crime and criminality, yes. we have all kinds of things to deal with. But for the most part, we are a God-fearing people. He urged the Roman Catholics to stand for what is right. And if you know right and you know what it is, the foundation that was laid in your own life by your own parents, right. you right. hold on to that? You right. pass on to your children, you know the saying, monkey see, monkey do? Yeah. So if they see you doing something, that is exactly what you do. No double standards, don't tell them to do something, or you're doing something else. Father Stout urged that we live the kind of lives God calls us to, 
to speak about others with love and charity, and to teach our children the right things, manners, fear of God, love, and respect. Following the Mass, Father Stout greeted members of the congregation and shared a meal prepared by the Trinidad and Tobago community at Christ the King. I'm Roger Sant reporting for Catholic News Altos. His Grace Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon has told newly confirmed candidates at Our Lady of Perpetual Help in San Fernando that the pledge they made to serve God must be their guide as they embark on their journey of adulthood within the Church. Delivering the homily at the Sacrament of Confirmation for candidates from OLPH in San Fernando and the St. Vincent Ferrer Maruga Parish at a ceremony in San Fernando, His Grace told the newly confirmed that they have now become adults in the faith, and as adults, they are now called upon to make sacrifices. He pointed to the pledge they made to build a civilization of love. We are ready and willing to grow in love and to be instruments of justice and peace in the Caribbean and wherever we go, respecting the differences of others. You see, you said that you, you pledge to build a civilization of love, not so? You said that, correct? And if you pledge to build a civilization of love, where are we going to practice at first? Huh? At home, correct? Next time, mommy we'll say, clean up the room. Tell me what we're doing. Yes, mommy. His Grace also urged the candidates to get down on their knees, to pray daily, to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and to always ask God's forgiveness for the times they fall short of doing God's will. And those responsible for teaching the Catholic faith have been told they play a vital role in the mission of the Church, passing on not only the importance of service, but also offering healing. The message came from the main speakers at last Sunday's Catechetical Conference, organized by the Archdiocesan Catechetical Office and held at Presentation College, Chagornas. The theme was Catechists, Missionaries of Healing and Service. We have this report from editor Raymond Sims. Gary Tegeli, Director of Office of Pastoral Planning and Development, told catechists that their work and ministry today will reflect on the identity of the church tomorrow. He said the mission of catechists extends beyond teaching to embodying the transformative message of the gospel. Speaking on the theme catechists, missionaries of service, he encouraged them to use the See, Judge, Act method to understand their community's reality and plan their actions accordingly. The role of a catechist as a missionary of service is both a privilege and a profound responsibility. Through the mission of God and the church, catechists are called to serve with compassion, empowerment, community building, and if you are able to learn and use the See Church Act method, you can effectively address the needs of your communities fostering both individual and public transformation. And co-founder of the Zion RC community, Mary Batiste, spoke on the theme, Catechists, Missionaries of Healing. She had a challenge for catechists. I am challenging you that if you want to talk about healing this morning, what the Holy Father said, you have to get a little bit dirty, you have to go down on the ground a little bit, you have to talk to red people, red young people, red the welcome address was delivered by Gillian Rubin, Director of Catechetics. There were group discussions and presentations during the day, which ended with Holy Mass, and celebrated by Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. I am Raymond Sims for Catholic News Altos. The Vatican's doctrinal office, with the blessing of Pope Francis, on Thursday granted approval for devotion to Mary at the popular pilgrimage site in Medjugorje. This approval recognizes the abundant spiritual fruits received at the Sanctuary of the Queen of Peace, but made no declaration on the supernatural character of the Marian apparitions. We have more in this story from Rome Reports. The Vatican has given the official green light on the spiritual experience at Medjugorje, but is urging caution. 
Medjugorje, located in the Balkans region, is where the Virgin Mary has allegedly revealed herself on a regular basis to six local children since the 1980s. The site has become a major pilgrimage destination, as an estimated over 50 million people have visited since the alleged apparitions began. Under the prefect, Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, this decision from the Vatican Doctrinal Office comes in the form of a nihil obstat, which is Latin for nothing hinders. In this case, it means the faithful are, quote, authorized to give it their adherence in a prudent manner, but they are not obligated to believe it. Following a new process instated by the doctrinal office in May, the Vatican will not declare whether an alleged apparition is of, quote, supernatural origin, but will simply point out if there are serious doctrinal flaws. It's time now for us to take a short break, and when we come back, we speak with Rhonda Mengo, co-foundress of the Living Water Community. Before we go, here's a look at this week's trivia question. <laughs> Thanks very much for staying with us. Rhonda Mary Mengo has for over 45 years dedicated her life to the advancement of God's work in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. The co-founder and directress of the Living Water Community, Rhonda is the recipient of the Hummingbird Gold Medal for Community Service. And last week received the International Women's Forum TT inaugural Inspirational Legacy Award. She joined us here today on the Alto set for the first time. Rhonda, welcome. Thank you very much, Neil. It's thank good to be home, yes? Me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Rhonda, you co-founded the Living Water Community in 1975. That's just right. one year before Trinidad and Tobago achieved mm -hmm. our Republican mm -hmm. status. Give us a comparison between 45, 46 years ago and today. What are you wow. seeing in terms of, <laughs> of Trinidad and Tobago? Right. When, I, when we look at a country, we see a lot of good things and a lot of not so good things, mm -hmm. I, I would say, in these 45 years and over. In those days, um, the, the standard of living was much lower than it is today. And the poor were there, but not in the amount that we see the, the poor today. There yes. was a big middle class of society where that has shrunk a lot and we have many more poor people. And, the governments in those days, um, the social net wasn't like today. Um, it, it was much less than today. And I've seen certainly over the 45 years that each government that has come on be more and more concerned about uh, having that social net and, and trying to do something. Mm -hmm. Of course, it still isn't adequate, and we know that. But certainly the attention of the government to the, the needs of the poor and the marginalized has grown over the years. So I, I would say as the poverty has grown and as the, the middle class has shrunk and more people are on the bread line, the government and also other NGOs, a lot more NGOs have come on board. I mean, we had very few in, in, in the early days. So they have a lot more NGOs, a lot more people helping, a lot more giving to, 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 to build a society than we had in those days. So certainly good things and bad things uh, we, we can see. But Rhonda, with, with more government initiatives, with more NGOs doing so much more, we still have a lot yes. more poor persons. Absolutely. What, what can we do to stem this tide? What can we do to change this as a society? What can we do? <laughs> that, that's the question. Mm -hmm. eh? That is the question, what can we do? Of course, education is a huge part of, of mm -hmm. this. And the education system, which really doesn't assist much in the, those who are marginalized, is, is one big area. Another area, of course, would be families. The family life in those days were very different to today. And the, the need for working with families to understand you know, the, the importance of families in society is huge, is, is really huge. And I know the church thinks of that. And, and, but it's, the, the reality is there. The reality is there. Also, I think, um, a hungry man is an angry man, you know? Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of hungry people in our country. 
So they just give up uh, and they, they, they choose crime and violence and whatever it is. So there's a lot of work to be done in our society and we need people and organizations and governments, one after the other, whoever they may be, to really focus on it. I guess the government might have a list of what is important and maybe poverty is down the road by 17 or 20 or something. But maybe that has to be lifted, you know, okay. put in a higher place because this is what is really destroying our nation. You know, it's the poor, it's the mm -hmm. people who are marginalized, it's the people who have nothing and have no opportunities that are really destroying our nation. So a lot, well, one of the main things anyway. So a lot has to be looked at in that, in that context. But after, after 45 years, what drives Rhonda Mengo? Hmm, only God. Mm -hmm. The Lord, he's driven me for the 45 years and mm -hmm. you know, it's just the power of God in my life. I thank God every day and the journey that I've made and the community that's around me and the people who support and encourage. But certainly God's blessing and God's faithfulness. What a faithful God, Neil, we have, you know. He always is there. I tell people now when they see, when they bring a problem to me and say, well, what are we gonna do about this? God has never failed us yet. He's not going to fail us now. I, I, we saw at the inspirational, at the, the International right. Women's mm -hmm. you know, Forum, yeah. where you got the award. You said that for all this time, you have been, God has been trying to find you, yeah. and you have been trying to find God. God. And after 45 years, you haven't found God yet. No. <laughs> he found me. He, <laughs> he captured he found my you. heart. He captured you. And that was it. The next day, I woke up, and I, my life was changed. Mm -hmm. But that was 50 years ago. Next mm -hmm. year, it would be 50 years for that. And, but I was trying to find this God all the time. I was seeking him every day, but praise God. Maybe one day in heaven we might find him. Yeah. One, of the, one of the areas or one of the places that people have yeah. gone to seek out the face of God has been Medjugorje. Yeah. And I know the Living Water community has, yeah. has you know, sent many pilgrimages right. to Medjugorje. The Vatican has now said yeah. that, yes, this is a genuine, yes. yeah. a genuine site. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Fantastic. You have Fantastic. been to Medjugorje Absolutely. Yourself. We have a pilgrimage there right now. Oh, so okay. there's a lot of celebration in yes. Medjugorje, you know. Yeah. Yes, what a wonderful site. It's such a blessed place. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it was only a matter of time before the, the, the church would have had to bless this because the amount of conversions, thousands and thousands and thousands of people every month and every year are being converted in, in that amazing, amazing sanctuary of peace, you know. So oh, it's a, a day of celebration, mm -hmm. absolutely a day of celebration. Thanking God for the gift of his mother to the world because mm -hmm. she has come there for the whole world yeah. as Queen of Peace. And as, as the Queen of Peace of mm -hmm. Living Waters, mm -hmm. you have received not just this award, you've received many awards before. The, what is the significance of these awards and these, the significance of that to the work you do here at Living Waters and to the work of, of NGOs like, like, like Living Waters yeah. in the, within the national community? I guess, um, you know, it's always humbling to receive a, an award, which I always say is, is God's work, you know. Mm -hmm. all we, what we do, what we try to do is God's work. It's all His work. And for Him be praise and glory. But certainly, when we receive awards as NGOs and, you know, people look at the community in a different way, and, you know, benefactors and, and people who even on the outskirts of the church, where, you know, who have left the church would look and see the, you know, something happening in the church. Because I always, of course, we are here because of the church. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's the call the Lord has given us into, for the church. So we are here because of the church. But yes, it is, it, and I think too, it always encourages people that they can do something too. Mm -hmm. They can do, they can be committed, they can do something. There's no end to what we can do to help, you know, and certainly we have have a lot of NGOs, a lot of committed people in our country, and they have really stemmed the tide of, of big violence and so mm -hmm. in, in our nation by the work that we do together. So this encourages people not to give up, to keep on going, because what we do is alleviating the plight of the poor, and that is so necessary in our country. But there is a view by some, you know, and they, they, we, some people trace it back to the scriptures, that the poor will always yeah, be with us, yeah. and therefore we throw our hands in the air. Is that a philosophy you subscribe to? Is that something you say that, well, you know, yeah. well, they will always be with us, so? Absolutely well, not, absolutely great. not. There's also in the scriptures we can read that um, 
never keep the poor waiting, mm -hmm. you know. So there's mm -hmm. a lot about the poor that, that we can look at too in the scriptures. Absolutely not. We have to be here for the poor and we have to uh, assist them and help them. And yes, they will be poor, but they're here for us too, mm -hmm. for us and for us to grow as, as people. Uh, our contribution to them doesn't only uh, help them, it helps us. I always say, you know, I set out to work for the poor and to help with the poor, but the poor have helped me and worked for me in my life in a and, huge way. And, and, and there's a new poor, some people are saying, which is in the migrant community yes. and Living Waters is yeah. doing some work yeah. with the migrant community. Mm -hmm. how, is that, how, how is that ministry now to the migrant Very community? Very depressing sometimes because there's so little we can do to help the migrants. Mm -hmm. We try every day and yes, we do help, but there's so much more we can do. I mean, imagine you have someone that is sick and can't get any medical attention. You know, that's very, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And we have that all the time because there are thousands of people here. You know, right now we're dealing with someone who needs a lot of medical attention and there's no, no assistance. Mm -hmm. They can go for an emergency, but after that but there's after not. That, yes. But of course, it's very difficult for the government too because all over the world we see the same thing happening. People mm -hmm. are, you know, come into all the shores and the services just cannot cope with it. So it is a very difficult and precarious situation for everyone. So it, we need people to work. We need people. If there are vi migrants in your community, in your area, you know people, reach out, help, touch, you know. If, I mean, we have a million people in, in this country that can help people. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to help. And if all of us work together, if all of us help, then we would be able to, be able to, to do help that. people. Rhonda, on behalf of all of us, we want to congratulate you on your award and to Thank really you. keep praying for you and the Living Water community. Thank you very much. That you could continue the work that you're doing. Thank you very Rhonda, much. Very God much. bless you. Thank yeah. you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks very much for staying with us. The parish of St. Philip and St. James Chagornos and its communities in Canoopy and Longdonville are basking in the glory of winning the recently held Shepherd's Cup Futsal Tournament. We sat down with them to try and find the winning formula. Team chemistry was identified as one of the challenges in bringing together young men from the various communities in the Chagornos parish. We had like different ages, different age groups, and if you have noticed, it's like we have three different committees. So like getting these committees and all these kids in different parishes to come together, we had a bond because we had some, we might be training, we had to, you know, to get going, but once we started, we always have a bond and we had one target. Our one of our main focus was that we come to represent the church and to serve God. The winning part was one of the best parts. All the trainings really paid off. We did well. And one thing I must say, we really worked on chemistry. That will give us a good lead on this tournament. Also, getting the students to train in and around their other activities, including exams and confirmation prep, proved to be another issue they overcame. So we have a lot of students that were conflicting in terms of preparing for exams, other activities like confirmation, so it was difficult to get them to commit to practice and training. However, we were able to overcome that, and fortunately, with this closure of school, we had that commitment on their part in terms of availability. Bartholomew said this was more than just football and sport, but ultimately bringing glory to God. Shepherd's Cup is about fun, fellowship, and fitness, but we are the element of family to it. And that is what helped to build that chemistry, helped to build the communication, helped to build that team spirit that caused them to gel and to be successful. This is not a football thing. This is all about fellowship. We teach the Bible. We have quizzes about fitness, it's about leadership, it's about community development, as well as as much evangelism, like into different communities. We certainly congratulate them on their victory. We take a look now at the, this, ed this week's edition of the Catholic News with Associate Editor Simone de Lochan. In this week's special Republic Day issue, read what happened the day we became a republic in August 1976. And have you ever heard of a curry lao? Chef Bernadette Burke talks about her creation as well as her background and inspiration for the dish. I am Simone de Lochan, Associate Editor of the Catholic News. I think that's a good place for us to end this week's show with a curry lao. 
Happy Republic Day, everyone. That's a wrap for this show. We remind you to pray, read your Bible, and learn your faith. As we go, though, we leave you with some video of the seminarians' recent visit to the Malabar Parish as they seek to promote their vocation. We urge you to continue to pray with and for them. Have a good week, everyone, and Happy Republic Day. Altos was brought to you with the kind compliments of Rituals Coffee House.